When you go and buy a product and it has big letters on the front of it that says natural, it's obvious that you're expecting you're getting a product that does not contain a lot of synthetic chemicals or other chemicals. You're getting a product in your mind that is in fact all natural. But as we have seen too many times, that is often not the case. And that happens to be the case of Purex natural laundry detergent. Joining me now to talk about this is Scott Hardy from topclassactions.com. So Scott, recently uh, we had a, a federal court up in New York. They've given preliminary approval to a, a major settlement regarding this uh, Purex natural laundry detergent because uh, uh, as the class stated, it's not actually natural what's in these bottles. Uh, lay this one out for us. Right. Uh, you know, I actually got a nice education on what is in laundry detergents while researching this case. And this case really hinged on is water all natural, which of course it is. But what the case actually was based upon water is what's the, in the majority of this detergent. So when you're buying this bottle, you're buying mainly water. And so the defense said, hey, the defense argued if water is counted as a natural ingredient, the products can consist almost entirely of natural ingredients by weight because it's mainly water. But the judge said, listen, if water is excluded from the calculation, so we'll take water out of it since water, you know, isn't, isn't why you're buying this detergent, you're buying the detergent or the surfacants, that's another nice little technical term we learned today, surfacants uh, that are used to actually clean your clothes. And so if you take out the water, the product consists of a little more than half of natural ingredients by weight. So once you take out the water, still uh, about, you know, less than half, a little less than half of the ingredients are actually synthetic and not all natural. So once the judge made that ruling back in February of last year, uh, you, had, you had the defense and the plaintiffs go back and forth and agree on a settlement because once the judge said, listen, you know, water is an inactive ingredient. You're just using that to mix up the surfacants that we'll, you'll be using to help actually clean the clothes. Uh, you need to come to an actual consensus. So we have this one and a half million dollar settlement, which is actually pretty darn good for consumers where the average class member uh, will get anywhere from two to four dollars and can claim up to 10 bottles without proof of purchase. And so they could get anywhere from $20 to $40 per class member if they don't have proof of purchase, but they'll be able to get much more than that if they save their receipts and can submit that with their claim. And part of the issue with this one is that, again, on the front of the bottle there, it says natural. It says this is natural elements. And then when you turn the, the bottle of laundry detergent around, you see things like, I can't wait to butcher these names, uh, sodium polyacrylate, disodium distrilbifenol, sol, uh, disulfonate, uh, lyliol, methyl, good heavens, and I uh, uh, can't even pronounce that one, and benzyl, benzoate. So, on the back of the package, it's telling you a different story. It's saying, these are obviously not natural ingredients, but the front of the bottle says, nope, natural elements here, and part of the lawsuit actually says, you know, that consumers shouldn't have to scour the ingredients list on the back of the product in order to confirm or debunk the defendant's prominent front of the product claims. And, and that's the truth here though. I mean, that's, that's something you and I have talked about so many times. If you're going to put it in big, bold letters on the front, you better be able to back it up. And in this case, all you have to do is turn the package around which most people don't do because we don't feel the need to. We don't have the time to. We don't want to look like a weirdo in the laundry detergent aisle standing in the middle reading all of the ingredients here. No, we're supposed to be able to take it at face value here. And that's essentially what they, they had to argue in court uh, in front of this judge. Right. I mean, I, I was checking this out this morning and we've already received more than 600 comments on this settlement talking about this because you've got a lot of people out there that bought it thinking it was all natural. But once you take out the water part, you know, the 40% of it isn't 
natural or are, 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 are not natural ingredients. There are a lot of tongue twisters in here. I'm glad you said the ingredients rather than me. But uh, as he said, people are looking at this saying this, it's, it's advertised as natural. They expect it to be natural when the majority of the actual ingredients that do something to your clothes are synthetic. And you know, you, 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 it's, that's a hard one to win when you take it to court, which is why they've settled. But you have so many buyers. We've had so many comments on this. We'll see. It looks like it looks like the plaintiff attorneys did a really good job in negotiating the actual terms for it, and uh, I'm I'm impressed by that with that kind of potential payout for the end users. Absolutely. And if anybody needs any more information about this particular class action, you can follow the link in the description of this video. Head over to topclassactions.com, and while you're there, make sure you sign up for their weekly newsletter to stay on top of all of the information that consumers need to be aware of. Scott Hardy, Top Class Actions, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. You're welcome. Thanks, Farron.